we've covered many ancient, perplexing, unexplained sites which can be found all over the world. Astonishing achievements located far within Earth's history, many still baffling those who study them even to this day. Possible ancient kings with unimaginable wealth and power, using as yet unknown technologies to create ancient sanctuaries, capable of sustaining their once flourishing civilization. Perched upon precarious ledges, even upon the tops of mountains, it is not only the construction techniques which evade modern explanation, but on many occasions, how these ancient people built such structures, at such hostile locations, is equally challenging to the brain. Located within the northern Metale district near the town of Dambulane in Sri Lanka, is a stone monolithic settlement perched high above the jungle. Its stone ruins and ancient sculptures displaying the weathering of countless millennia. An ancient rock fort which is undoubtedly a testament to these ancient people's miraculous capabilities. Known as Sigiria, or the Lion's Rock, it is an astonishing structure built atop an enormous rock formation, towering some 200 meters into the sky. According to academia, Lion's Rock was constructed within the last 2,000 years. However, future, yet little discussed archaeological exploration realized many remains and artifacts which date back far before this initial hasty dating, strongly suggesting an original origin far earlier in history. About halfway up the side of the rock is also the astonishing gateway in the form of enormous lion's feet. Above these would have been everything a small royal entourage would have needed to live a life in luxury and virtual safety. The question is, who were the first inhabitants of this gigantic rock fort? Who or what were they hiding from so far up in the sky? And most importantly, how did they build it? Interestingly, many sites around the world display extremely ancient and extremely amazing stoneworking. Some of these remnants appearing to have been formed through some sort of melting, rather than having been carved, and Lion's Rock indeed possesses some of the same astonishing traces. An astonishing fort, one which still displays the enigmatic ledge gardens also still visible within ancient Peru, and even a constructed man-made lake atop the rock. The site is rarely visited by the 1.8 million tourists to Sri Lanka, or even the native population. However, as the evidence mounts to suggest the existence of this highly advanced group of builders, such sites are becoming more and more of interest every day. Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, take care. A few years ago, it was revealed that a small meteorite discovered within Sri Lanka may in all possibility contain the fossilized remains of legitimate alien life. Fossils of animals that originate from a very different place within our vast universe to anything we have ever witnessed. Minutes after a large fireball was seen by a number of people over Sri Lanka on 29 December 2012, a large meteorite disintegrated in the sky, falling into the village of Arganwila. The retrieved meteorite was then sent for studies at the Buckingham Center for Astrobiology and Cardiff University, both within the UK. It has since been noted that the general characteristics of the meteorite bear a striking similarity to those that fell over Denmark on January 17, 2009. This meteorite was identified as arising from an extinct cometary fragment within the Torrid complex. It has thus been associated with Comet Enki. In the early part of this century, it was declared that fossils found within the meteorite center did indeed appear to be authentic remnants of the first alien life officially discovered here on Earth. However, predictably, the investigations were stonewalled by skeptics, stating that the fossils were nothing but mere contamination which had occurred here on Earth. Since then, although public interest has fizzled out, a tremendous amount of research has been undertaken in an attempt to establish the fossil's true origins and ultimate authenticity. This research has resulted in a detailed report reviewed and published within the Journal of Cosmology with an opening statement as follows. We report the discovery, for the first time, of diatom frustules in a carbonaceous meteorite that fell in the north-central province of Sri Lanka on 29 December 2012. Roughly translated, this means that we have officially discovered fossilized alien life. It continues, Contamination is excluded by the circumstance that the elemental abundances within the structures match closely with those of the surrounding matrix. 
there is also evidence of structures morphologically similar to red rain cells, which may have contributed to the episode of red rain that followed in the days after the meteorite's entry. The new data on fossil diatoms provide strong evidence to support the theory of cometary panspermia." End quote. Panspermia is the theory that life is spread throughout the universe upon meteorites. Mass catastrophe occurs upon a life-rich planet, the event sending fragments of the planet, each containing the seeds of life, deep into space. These seeds then float across space. Some, like a seed from a tree caught on the breeze, may be lucky enough to land in a location capable of sustaining them, thus spreading life throughout the cosmos. It is a theory relative to the spread of life which is seen from seeds on the wind. Reports of microfossil discoveries in meteorites have a long and complicated history. Early claims of microfossils and carbonaceous meteorites by Klaus and Nagy in 1961 were quickly dismissed as contaminants. Pollen grains were often mistakenly attributed to microfossils. However, this new study, and the evidence thereof, is now undeniable. And although these tiny creatures are so small they cannot be seen by the naked eye, they harbor the power to impact all of our perceptions about our universe in a profound way. They will inevitably shape our Earth, and indeed acceptance of the fact that we are, officially, not alone. Regardless of continent, we even suspect Antarctica, you will find remnants left by an as yet unexplored ancient yet clearly highly advanced civilization. Due to their immense age and the enormity of time which has passed since their mysterious disappearance, only stone megaliths remain. These remarkable block structures, still allowing us to peer back and, with a bit of imagination, get a peek at just what this golden age could have possibly been like. Many of these ancient sites, seemingly abandoned suddenly, with no damage appearing to have befallen any of these sites at the time of their vanishing act, leaving buildings half-built, stones half-cut, still resting in the quarries, including the notoriously remote Easter Island, all abruptly and mysteriously abandoned. The question is, where did they go? Did they reach a point of spiritual or technological ability that they experienced a type of rapture, ascending, or perhaps descending into another place entirely? Perhaps through the use of some type of portal? Sakwala Chakraya, or Ramsu Uyana, is an ancient incredible petrograph. Beneath a large boulder, among the ruins of a once majestic city known as Anura Dapura, located within Sri Lanka, is what some experts have concluded is an inscription left by someone well over 5,000 years ago. There are two theories concerning the meaning of the petroglyph, and rather humorously, they both make the ancient drawing an upart. Firstly, that is somehow an ancient map of the Earth, a chart, illustrating a complex knowledge of the Earth. And secondly, and undoubtedly the most compelling, and supported by considerably more study, is the petroglyph is a key to some sort of portal, which many suspect to be a stargate. There are no other known images similar to Sakwala Chakraya, known to any ancient cultures. In fact, there are no other known ancient images similar to Sakwala Chakraya anywhere in the world. In 1996, researcher and historian Mihindu Kulasaraya Susantha Fernando realized something amazing regarding surrounding ancient temples. Fernando described his discovery within his 1997 book, Alien Mysteries in Sri Lanka and Egypt. Just like the Great Pyramids of Giza, there exists a perfect alignment of three major stupas – Mary Savatia, Ruvanwelli, and Jetavana – all perfectly aligning with three stars within the constellation of Orion, namely Rigel, Alnitak, and Bellatrix. It seems such compelling and precisely arranged features cannot just be a mere coincidence. The center of the key is filled by a large circle comprising seven concentric rings which has been translated in regard to the key theory to represent acoustic radiation. Who made the key of Sakwala Chakraya? Is it really a key to a stargate, like so many now believe? Is this where the builders of these ancient sites went? We find the research to suggest such, 
highly compelling. Throughout the last few years, the speculation regarding an engraving, now commonly known as the Stargate of Ranmasu Uyana, has been circling within certain fields. Known locally as Bawa Chakraya, or the Sakwala Chakraya, it is hidden upon a boulder at the Royal Goldfish Park, sandwiched between Tisawiwa and the Isuramanaya rock temples at the World Heritage Site of Anuradhapura, Sri Lanka. It is not only a unique artifact, but as mentioned, a symbol believed by many to be a key to a portal. Sakwala Chakraya, which translates to Universe Cycle in Sinhalese, is a large circle comprised of seven concentric rings, lines are drawn vertically and horizontally, cutting the chakra into quadrants, parallel lines divide the circle vertically into ten strips, varying in width from 3 inches to 9 inches thick. Many have interpreted the patterns as figures resembling umbrellas, bows and arrows, kites, wavy lines, and cylindrical shapes, with the outer ring depicting marine animals such as fish, turtles, and seahorses. Quote, when compared to the other carvings from the same period, they nearly always depict vines, swans, and the lotus, all of which typical of Buddhist iconography. The chart itself, however, is without religious context, making it an anomaly and leaving it without any obvious explanation as to why it should exist or indeed its real age," said Professor Raj Samadeva, senior professor of archaeology at the University of Kelaniya, Sri Lanka. The first academic notation of the chart's archaeological importance was by H.C.P. Bell a British civil servant appointed as the first commissioner of archaeology for ancient Sri Lanka or Ceylon. Bell made a description of the chart in 1911, where he concluded that, quote, this ancient map of the world is perhaps the oldest in existence and is of quite extraordinary interest, its presence testament to the antiquity's astronomical lore, end quote. Although the chart does not resemble modern maps, Bell wrote that it depicts, quote, an old-time cosmographical chart illustrating in simplicity the notions of the universe, end quote. According to the BBC World, quote, eagle-eyed tourists have remarked on parallels between the chart and Nura Dapura and similar sites in other countries that are believed by some to be stargates, ancient gateways through which humans could enter the universe. Their theory goes that the chart holds the secret code for unlocking the portal." End quote. We find the Sri Lankan Stargate highly compelling. The Lotus Pond Undoubtedly, one of the many astonishing advanced ruins that can be found around our planet. Who built this pond? Or indeed, Polinarawa, the incredible ancient ruin it is found amongst. Were the ancient religions merely reused? Maybe due to an attempt to claim such structures as their own. For indeed, these ancient buildings and their exquisite features provide an illusion of power as effortlessly as they seem to have been constructed. Any explanation, or the knowledge they were built with, evades us all. Polu Narua, within Sri Lanka, served as the country's capital city for nearly two centuries between the 11th and 13th centuries AD. Just like the many other sites all over Earth, Polin Narua is indicative of advanced lost knowledge, dating back to a time far before modern civilization even existed. We believe merely serving as ready-built sanctuaries, perfect for re-inhabitation, protecting their future guests from foes, and allowing them a head start in architectural and agricultural development. The Three Kings conveniently dominate the history of this site within academia. It should be clear to any astute individual that any group capable of creating such everlasting, perfectly precise sites would have undoubtedly dominated the surrounding lands for many years. However, as the truth is, as we would suspect, the reign of these Three Kings, and indeed our more modern ancestors' inhabitancy, lasted a mere century before being invaded and the ruins severely damaged. 
we believe that these structures were once built by the dominating, most knowledgeable force upon our Earth. A civilization which clearly attained a greater understanding of architecture than us, the modern man. We believe the evidence strongly suggests this, while there is no evidence to suggest what academia expects you to believe. That these currently unexplained, unimaginably advanced ancient ruins were somehow built by our copper-wielding ancestors. However, the choice in what you believe, of course, is entirely yours to make.